Good afternoon, students. Gives me great pleasure, honor, and privilege to stand here in front of all of you. I'm really looking at all your student leaders, amazed by the, your uniform and the smile that you have in your face. It's really lovely to be here. I get uh, reminded of my school days in Padma Seshadri. It's not as big as your school. Let me ask you a question. Which is the best school in Belur? Which is the best school in Tamil Nadu? And which is the best school in India? Yeah, that's great. Now I bring greetings from Christian Medical College, Velour, and that is my alma mater. I am a vascular surgeon. I look after your arteries and veins. So whenever your arteries and veins get blocked or something happens, then we go and do a plumbing job. So very similar to a lot of plumbers who work in your houses, but we work inside the body. Yesterday and today were very important days in the history of Velour. Can somebody tell me why is that? Today is the birthday of Dr. Ida Scudder. How many of you have heard of Ida Scudder? Lift your hands up. That's wonderful, yes, yeah. And yesterday was the birthday of the Chancellor of VIT. So these are the two great people of Velour, and I think the third person who's very, very important and who's done a lot of work is your own Chancellor here, Mr. Harigopalan. So give him a big hand as well. Now, I'm going to tell you a story which is very important. I keep telling the story wherever I go. It's a story of three knocks. How many of you have heard of these three knocks? So this started maybe 100 years ago when Dr. Aida Scudder was a student like all of you and she was living with her dad who was a doctor. So one night it was raining and a man comes to this house and says, ma'am, my wife is pregnant. How old is your wife? In those days, 100 years back, or more than that, you know, the wives, people used to marry the girls at a very young age. And this girl was pre probably around 16 years, 15 to 16 years, and she was pregnant and she was going to deliver. And you know, the midwife said they can't have a normal delivery, she needs much, something more than that. So they came to Ida Scudder and said, can you come and do something for my wife? And uh, Dr. Ida said, I'm not a doctor, but my father is a doctor. But in those days, Men could not come and do uh, look after women, so it was taboo. So unusually, on that night, she had two other knocks, two more people, one was a Muslim, another Hindu, had come and asked for the same help. And all of them said no to a male doctor. It looks very absurd now for all of you, but this is how we were 100 years back or more than that. There was a lot of taboo in the society. Women were not allowed to do a lot of things. And the next day morning, they didn't have somebody to do the delivery. All three of the women died. And this stirred something in Dr. Ida's mind. And so she went back to America by ship. And then she learned medicine and she came back and set up the first medical college. And the college had only women till 1947. And then the men came in. So in those days, with all this taboo, here was a lady who can say, I will start a medical college, I will empower women, I will make them come and study, and I will make doctors and nurses out of them. It was a challenging thing, but she said, I will take up the challenge and do that, and look where we are now. This is the importance that Dr. Aida actually gave to education, reading, and the motto was, Excellence in Clinical Service, Education and Research with the Healing Ministry of Christ as the central part of the motto. And so, 100 years now, it's now this is the 125th year, the institution is huge. When Mr. Harigopalan was talking about the roots of this, uh, how Sunbeam started, I was reminded of uh, Dr. Aida, a visionary. And same here, we have your chairman, who's also an equally great visionary, who has 35 acres of land, he's got so much of areas to play, and he thought about it so many years back. And we have Chennai Super Kings. I'm a big fan of Dhoni. How many of you are fans of Dhoni? There you are, yes. CSK is my favorite team as well. I used to play a lot of cricket as well. And so that's how educational institutions in Velour started. And we are proud to have that we have the best medical college in the country or in the world. It's a Christian Medical College, Velour. And we have the best educational institution, Velour Institute of Technology. And we have Sunbeam as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about libraries, but before that, I'm going to say one small thing, what Dr. Aida actually said to her first students. She said, first ponder, then dare. Know your facts. Count the cost. Money is not the important thing. What you are building is not a medical school. 
it is the kingdom of God. Don't err on the side of being too small. So these are wonderful words. If you look at each and every sentence in this, it carries a huge meaning. And if you look at what you have in Sunbeam, it's very similar to what Dr. Ida said. Don't err on the side of being too small. Now we have a very huge institution here. And what you're building is not at the school, but you are building human resource. All of you are going to become doctors. Tomorrow you're going to become lawyers. Some of you are going to come back and stand here and speak. Some of you are going to become policy changers for this country. So there you are. You've got the best privilege that you can have in this institution. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about libraries. And libraries are not a Western cultural thing. It is what we had in our country. We had extensive libraries. I can actually look at the Indus and the Harappan civilizations and the Nalanda University, which had some of the biggest libraries in the world. And then if you come to the medieval period, you had the best library, actually, you see it in Tanjavur. It was the Saraswati Mahal Library, which was built by the Nayaks in the 15th and 16th century. It has more than 40,000 manuscripts there, all on palm leaves. And then the Tanjavur was invaded by the Marathis, and then the Marathis took over this library, and it became a great center of learning. And then you have the modern-day libraries, the British councils, and lots of other things when the British came inside. And when travel became more, and people started traveling more, and we had people with different knowledges, different languages, and the libraries became bigger. And now, the problem with libraries is in doubt because of your cell phones and your computers, like what George is saying. All of you are rooted on to your cell phones, and then you have your Instagram, your WhatsApps, your forwards, and all those things. The art of sitting in a place and reading is not there anymore. So we encourage you, and I'm, I'm so glad to see this beautiful library. You don't have these kinds of libraries in many places. I encourage you to go and read books. When I was small, I used to read a lot of comics, Enid Blyton's, Hardy Boys. How many of you still read Hardy Boys and Nancy Drews? Lift your hands up. Yeah, I hear, see Robert Ludlum, Spy Stories. It's a sea of knowledge. If you start reading a book, you get immersed into it. And then you learn so much from these books. It's not only from your textbooks, but if you read these other books, it, it makes a, rounds you and makes a better personality of you. So libraries are your gateway to the rest of the world. And historically, some of the great people are ardent readers. They've always been reading books. The type of books that you read will make it what you are in the future. And with that, I want to end with a very nice poem that I read. I read a lot of poetry, but this is a, one of the first poems that I read when I went to the library, and when I was a student like you. It was, If I Can Stop One Heart From Breaking, by Emily Dickinson. When I became a doctor, I kept reading this poem all the time. If I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life the aching, or cool one pain, or help one fainting robin, unto his nest again, I shall not live in vain. You can read such things only in libraries. And I tell you, I promise you, the small things that you read today will make a big difference in your life in the future. Thank you very much, and all the best to all of you. <laughs>